All right, everyone, we're live here at Goldwell KMS Academy in New York City with our man Jay Mahmood. He's been doing an incredible modern Bob makeover for you guys today on Lindsay. Lindsay, you ready for a big yeah. makeover? Let's have a look at uh, some of Jay's work and what he's focused on here today. And uh, let's get right into it and let him describe what's, what's happening because he's already started putting in the baseline. Excellent. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. So have been teaching all week, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So with Lindsay's um, hair, I'm starting off by cutting a line. We've got a rectangular zone on the top here, um, and this is going to be the disconnected length that we're going to keep, which I'll talk about later on. So for now, we're just combing the hair straight down, keeping it nice and clean, and cutting a beautiful line, and that will carry on until the top of the zone to behind the ears, okay? So just make sure you're keeping the hair nice and damp, and, <clears throat> and obviously you can see my guide, and just cut to your guide at all times, making sure you're keeping everything as clean as possible. Also, just move the head a tiny bit here because this will allow for the natural fall of the hair. And I'm just gently holding the hair with my comb to keep it in place. So what's the benefit of holding with the comb rather than holding it in the fingers or pressing it on the skin? Can you explain some of the differences in cutting a line? That's a really good point. There's actually four main ways you could cut a line. Um, you could cut through the comb like I'm doing here. You could cut through your fingers. You could cut on the skin using the back of your fingers like so. Or you could actually cut freehand. I was trying to think of what the fourth one was. Yeah. I didn't think of freehand. Yeah, I but think that's that's true. Yeah, I think really each of them, none of them are wrong. It just depends on the hair. So, for example, if you're cutting through the comb, you can see Lindsay's hair is really well behaved, and I'm just using the comb to secure the hair into place. In a case where you would cut through the fingers, I think that is really suited for hair that is either curly, or I would say for hair that is very thick because it will just give you that little bit more graduation um, so that when you blow dry the hair will just bevel and sit really well. In the case of on the skin, I think if the hair's sitting really well but the ends are flicking, you might just want to hold them. And in the case of freehand, either if the hair's just perfect and it sits like a dream, or if, um, if the hairline's very, very jumpy, I'd say you could also use freehand. So the look that we showed earlier, um, and we'll show it again, um, is going to be kind of a bob shape, very angled towards the front. Sometimes yeah. we call that A-line or triangular. Yeah. Um, and you're starting off with the baseline. Exactly. Do you always start with the baseline, or do you sometimes start internally and then do the baseline? And a, is there a difference? That's a really good question, to be honest. You I've could... done this a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your work, I know you have. Um, you, could, you could actually go straight with your internal shape. So you could start with your layering. Uh, and in this case, I'm only working my lines behind the ears, and that's going to give me a strong external shape. But the sides I'm going to create through my internal shape, which will keep it all soft. So you're combining. You're going to exactly. do a baseline and, and exactly. on the back, but not on the sides. And exactly. that's going to give it a bit more modern flair. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes not, not all clients want strong lines on their hair. Sometimes they just want something really soft, something very movable. And, and what I want to do for you guys today is something salon friendly. Um, I thought about loads of different ideas but I wanted to create something that you can actually do in the salon. You know it's great when we see cool haircuts but a lot of the time we can't recreate them so I think this one will be really good for the salon. Yeah and you know just to, to be able to get on to some of those fundamental techniques and I always find that you know to just be creative all you do is combine some techniques together in an original way on, an, on, a, on a unique person with suitability. I saw one of your posts had a little thing where it said technique, suitability, and I forget what the third one was. It yeah. was like Jay Mahmood education. Oh yeah. Technique, suitability. Technical, suitable, precise. Technical, suitable, precise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I thought that that was great. Okay, so we've got lots of great people joining in. Yeah. We've got Adam Federico, our big bud hey. out in Sacramento. Hey, Adam. And you've been out there and done education with Adam and his I team. Have, I had yeah. a fantastic time with Adam and the team. And great of course, guys. Candace Rossi is joining in. Oh they, wow, hello uh, Candice. We've yeah. had a great week together. Yeah, she Amazing was here with you. Yeah. Um, Christine Virgil says hello from Salt Lake City. Hello Christine. All right, Emily Costello, our great friend from Philadelphia. Who yeah, we're she's, have a cool, a, she's a cool yeah. girl, yeah. She's an amazing girl, great example of you know, a powerful female hairdresser making incredible things happen. I'll we're show you freehand very quickly as we're still yeah, announcing do. everyone. 
Sorry, go ahead, Gerard. Who else is on there? Uh, James just joined. James Mould. James Mould, my man. Adam Federico says, what's up, Lindsay? Hi. Okay, we've got our first question. And, you know, Jay's a brilliant teacher, and he wants to answer as many of your questions Absolutely. as possible. That's what it's How do you about. decide if you're going to do horizontal graduation or vertical graduation? Oh. And that's coming from Christine Virgil. Very good question, actually. Vigil, sorry, Christine yeah. Vigil. I think, first of all, we need to understand the difference between putting our shape in vertically or horizontally. Now you can achieve, to be honest, you can achieve the same, the same effect whether you do it vertically or horizontally but it's much easier to create a slimmer, flatter shape if your sections are vertical and it's much easier to keep more weight and build a heavier shape if your sections are horizontal. So, like I said, you can create the same effect but you want to go for what makes it easier and most convenient also. Isn't the thing like, you know, with great fundamental precision haircutting, it's pretty logical. So like what Jay just said, if you want to make your shape flatter, you tend to work more vertically. Yeah, so even if it's graduated and you work vertically, you naturally make it flatter. If you work horizontally, you're working against gravity. Exactly. It's hard to lift and to flatten it out. So most of the questions and most of the things that people want to figure out with precision haircutting, if you use some logic, yeah. you'll kind of figure it out. So the Men's Fire team is all watching, they're all tuned Very in. Very good friends of mine, yeah. actually. Yeah. Great guys. Yeah. And again, we'd love to hear all your questions for Jay. He's a teacher with lots of experience. I've got a couple of years of experience myself in teaching, <laughs> but we're focused on Jay today. So let's get back into the technique. All good. So now that I've created my line up to behind the ears, I'm going to come through and start to work an internal shape. So I'm going to start to layer the shape, which is going to help me manage the weight. What I like to do is I like to get the head upright so I'm always in control of my cutting angle. And, <clears throat> you know, one thing I remember when I was younger, I never understood about cutting angles. I'd look at my stylist and I'd say, well, how do you know what angle to cut the hair at? And they would all say the same thing, the same thing. They'd all say, you just feel it. And it's like, okay, that doesn't really help me very much. What am I supposed to be feeling? It's kind of a tough way to teach Exactly, people. yeah. yeah. Um, and just very quickly, while we've got this shot, I'll explain why I'm using this cutting line. I'm using a square cutting line and I'm working above the occipital bone which is going to keep more weight in my outline. And the easiest way to look at it is, had my angle been more like this, for example, I would have removed more internal weight and kept much more weight on my outline. And in contrast to that, had my angle been more like so, I would have taken more weight from the outline and kept more internal um, weight and length. So in this case, I kind of want to keep enough weight in my outline and I also want to keep enough length and weight towards the top. And we typically refer to that as kind of square to the head. Exactly. So it won't kind of make the hair like a bell shape, which can easily happen with a bob. Exactly. You know, it'll keep a certain amount of fullness and kind of a robust shape at the bottom, exactly. rather than totally collapsing it. Exactly. That's a great lesson right there. So again, Jay pointed out graduation, kind of, you know, square layering or cutting square to the head and also kind of convex layering. If you were to go higher and round it off, that kind of makes more of a bell shape. Yeah. We're here, you're going to have kind of a very nice flat looking graduation, would you think, say? Yeah, exactly. But what I'm doing here is um, just working really, really consistently. If you come and maybe come around here, you can see each section that I'm cutting, I'm taking some hair next to it, um, grooming either side of that away, and then some of the previously cut hair I'm getting rid of. So I'm not carrying too much hair at the same time. And you can use the tight side just to keep it all really clean. So this way you've got half previously cut hair and half new hair if you like and just always follow your guideline. So Jay, for you, working so precise and so clean and so organized, yeah. what, what do you find the benefits are in the end result? Like what, I mean a lot of people like to work with the feeling, work loose, yeah. but you particularly are known for precision and clean sectioning. Yeah. What, what's the benefit for you? Why do you choose to work that way? That's a really good question actually because um, I'm just full of good questions Yeah, today. you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be honest, I think that it gives you, one, it gives you more control. It's not just to look cool, you know, um, it looks good Although too. Although you do look really cool. Right? Yeah. Um, but I think it, essentially it gives you more control. And what you'll find is whenever you have more control, you'll always have a better end result. And the idea is some people might look at it and think, oh, well, that takes ages to do. And, but the thing is, you will never have to come back and fix anything. I promise you. If you cut with a lot of control, you're always following your guide, you're thinking about what you're doing. When you get to the end of your haircut, it really is the end of your haircut. 
Because I remember when I was younger, when I was a younger, more inexperienced stylist, I would cut hair and I would worry about the time and it would get messy. And when I'd work to certain areas like the crown or the ears or the fringe, I think I'd do all this dry. And then when you get to the end, you've still got half a haircut to do. So it's just about being efficient, trusting your technique and just remaining in control. Jay, people are really excited to watch what you're, what you're doing here. Nice. Some of our great friends, Mike Varela, yes. uh, Steve Kim, Maxime yes. from, from Russia, who is uh, a, a big contributor to Hairbrained and uh, does beautiful work. They're all tuning in, people oh, from amazing. all over the world. Maxime. Mike says, hey, Jay, what's up? Watching oh, you from Russia at the moment. Amazing. Yeah. I so hope it's going well in Russia for you, Mike. Mike's over there in Russia. It's great to bring everyone together to share. Um, and you know, you've done that all week here. So you've been at the Goldwell Academy here in New York all week. Yeah. Goldwell KMS Academy. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing here? Um, I've been working with, um, I've created a, Sorry, a fantastic um, <clears throat> comprehensive cutting curriculum, a global curriculum for Goldwell called the Master Stylist Program. And um, it basically runs parallel to our already very successful Master Colorist Program. Oh, and sorry. I've designed it like a journey. There we go. I've designed it like a journey and basically the journey starts with the foundations and the discipline of cutting hair. Um, so it starts with the essential shapes and um, which is really, a lot of people think, oh I know how to do the classic stuff, I don't really need to do that. But one thing, a lot of hairdressers with the greatest respect, they cut hair but they don't always fully understand what they're doing. You know, we sometimes go through the motions of cutting hair um, but we don't always know what we're doing. So I guess what the Essential Shapes focuses on is just the rules and the reasons why we do what we do. So you're starting to do a little <clears throat> bit of cross-checking now? Exactly. So I'm just coming through and making sure my shape's nice and clean. Sure. If there's any little bits, you can knock them off. But if there's a big area that's not clean, then I would suggest go back through. Okay, we had a great question from <clears throat> Julie. Note Boom Klein. So, nice name. yeah, I, I have such a hard time with some of the names, but I'll do my best. And this, so Julie really wants to know how you determined, you know, so she understands the difference in the square and the convex, but how did you determine exactly where to start layering? Yeah. Yeah. Like good how did you question. choose that, that point? Oh, okay. Very good question. I think again, it, it come back to how much weight I want to keep in my outline. Um, so if the hair was heavier um, and denser, then I could have started a little bit lower. But also, my lady's got a little bit of a jump in her hairline, so I didn't want to go too low, because if I remove too much weight, it'll obviously be quite difficult for her to... So, essentially, you down. cut the outline first, and then you picked Correct. it up almost as a pivot point, yeah. and you decided, you probably could have chose two or three different places. Absolutely. You could have went in and said, I'm going to really layer this a lot. Exactly. It might have been about three quarters of an inch shorter than it is now, the layers. Exactly. Or it could have been medium, or it could like come out a little bit. This little area here, this transition... I think it all comes down to kind of what you want. If you want a softer edge, by all means, you know, go a little bit lower. You don't have to start too high up, you know. But this haircut that I'm doing is actually something very similar that you could take from our Contemporary Shapes course, which is the second stage in the journey. So I mentioned the Essential Shapes, and then the Contemporary Shapes is like an introduction to salon-friendly disconnection, um, because I noticed from my journey, once I'd learned the classic stuff and I went on to the advanced, I'd, I'd get to this connection but I wouldn't really understand it. And so I realised that there was a, a bit missing, there wasn't that introduction to this connection. Yeah, the theory and the reason why. Exactly, because when you, when you master your classics, you're, you're supposed to know everything when you qualify, right? So um, <clears throat> that's something that I've put into the contemporary shapes. So Jay, we had a question come in from Terry Kondo, which is a great question. So as you're working towards the back of the ear, are you over-directing and why? Oh, very good question. And I'll tell you exactly why I'm choosing this amount of over-direction also. So if you think about it very quickly, horizontally, if we pull the hair out, we'll have a square shape. Um, you might want to come around here. Sure. So it would be square, which means it will be longer here and here. Okay, so the shortest point is in the center. And the reason for that is because everybody's hair behind the ear, the hairline goes up, so you've got a lot less hair over here. So had I taken this square cutting line and worked on the base and come straight out, by the time I got to here, it would have become really weak and wispy. So by over-directing to the previous and building a squarer shape, it keeps more length and therefore more weight. 
So it kind of evens out the density of the hair as well. Well done. Good question. Very good question, actually. Yep, so building that weight behind the ear. Yep. Randy's calling. I'll have to oh. turn that, that down. But, Why don't we uh, take his phone call? Right? Yeah, let's we take... <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, we're working here. Okay, so you've chosen to work vertically. You're working square to the head. Uh -huh. You're over-directing to kind of a square plane through the back. Yeah. And this will give you a beautiful bulb line with a nice kind of lean silhouette above it. Yeah. And um, build length into the front. And this is the part I'm really excited about after this beautiful kind of classic haircutting. You're going to work slightly differently through the sides. You're going to kind exactly. of uh, extend the length and work a bit looser. Just something more disconnected so, and a lot softer. Lots of people have just joined us, I'm sure. We've got over 400 watching live at the moment. Oh, which wow. Is great. Amazing. And I just want to recap when we find the picture of what Jay's going for um, on his beautiful model, Lindsay, here. Do, 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 do. And also keep the questions coming because this is kind of why we're doing this. So those of you that are just joining us, you can see this is one of Jay's haircuts from, I, I had to go back pretty far in your Instagram scroll, so yeah. it's something you did a while ago. And I, and I still think it's something very current and something... Well, the bob uh, never goes out of style. Exactly. It never goes out of style and neither does precision haircutting, you exactly, know? Exactly, yeah. I think... Um, you know, having it as your foundation and choosing when and where to use it. Now, do you always, there was a question earlier, you know, do you always work this way or do you sometimes work dry or freehand? Again, really good question. Um, personally, the way I like to work is I like to do everything kind of mechanically clean first. Um, and then <clears throat> I like to personalize afterwards because I think once you get your shape in, then you kind of have to make the hair work. I don't believe that every haircut has to be solid and really clean cut, but I think your foundation should start that way. Um, because we have to understand everyone's hair reacts differently, doesn't it, to how it's being cut. I just want to bring you in um, into the sides now. So I've cut the back vertically, the shape is square. I used over direction to the previous section. A really good tip I'll give you on that is actually the direction of the teeth of the comb. So if the teeth, if you're over directing this way to the previous, keep the teeth in the same direction as your over direction. And when you go into this side, again, direct the teeth in the same direction as your over direction. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And you know, how important are tools to you? I, I know that you, seems like every time I see you, you're working with the Sessi Bon comb. Oh, I love the Sessi yeah. Bon comb. What do you love about that comb? Because I love it too. I mean, it's really cool. This is going to sound really geeky. But it's got We're hair really, nerds, it's yeah, okay. It's got a really lovely texture to it. It's called alligator. I love it. Yeah, it's got an <laughs> alligator. And it kind of goes with my top. There right? you go. Yeah. 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 We're planning it out. Okay, question coming in from Sharon Hawkins about head position. Yeah. So she, she said that as you were layering the back, that looked as if the model's head was slightly down. Yeah. So number one, you know, how does that affect <clears throat> the cut? And number two, more of a, you know, she says she has a lot of trouble with clients when they have their phone and they, they put their head down too ah. far. So how would you handle That's that? That's a very, <laughs> very important question because yeah. head position can really, really impact on your shape. So in the beginning, you'll notice I said keep the head upright so you can control the cutting angle. And then I kind of allowed my lady to push her head down. So initially, the reason why I got the head upright is so I could really pick the correct angle. Once I'd done that, for the sake of the camera, I don't mind if her head goes down so long as I follow that guide. Yeah. It should be fine. You know, I always find, you know, it took me a long time, but picked up a great tip um, that I got from French haircutting, which is very loose and free. Uh -huh. And it was basically push the head away from you when you want to preserve more weight yeah. and bring the head up when you perhaps want to remove more weight. That's a good you know? one. Yeah. That's and if you really think about one. it, it's when the hair is quite wet and you know it's going to maybe kind of retract or shrink back a little bit, yeah. or if you maybe want to preserve a little bit of, of weight for dry work, mm -hmm. you push away. So it naturally makes the target further away. So hopefully that's a great tip. Exactly. Now in terms of a client, you know, picking up their phone, mm -hmm. um, we have this discussion all the time on hair brains. People are always asking about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. It's about your relationship with the client. Yeah. You know, I think if you've built trust level and they respect you and you say, hey, Lindsay, would it be okay if, you know, perhaps you don't use your phone during the haircut exactly. because I can't work as well? Yeah then, you know, she should be able to understand that. I, I think, think so. It's about being to... honest, isn't it? Because they yeah. want a good haircut at the end of the day. You seem to be um, using a product as you're cutting. Absolutely, yeah. Is it a leave-in conditioner? Or... It is, yeah. It's a great spray by Kerasilk, um, one of the Goldwell ranges. And it's just going to help me to get a really nice finish on the hair. It's like a blow-dry spray. So I'm actually preparing the hair as I'm 
And it's something that you normally do, cut with product? I think so, yeah. Especially the more textured the hair is. In this case, our lady's got lovely straight hair. But I especially like to do it on curly hair. So, Jay, we've got a ton of people that have joined us now. We've got over 500 people watching Amazing. live. Hello. So can we recap a little bit for those who've just joined? Absolutely. So, Baseline in the back, and yep. then what, where, where do we go from there? So we got our line in the back. <clears throat> we cut a line in the back, and we kind of worked it to behind the ears. So we created a line, and then we went through with vertical sections, a square cutting line from the occipital bone, and then each section was back to the previous, so it's horizontally square and vertically square. So you were building longer and longer into the front. Exactly. Not, not all the way to number one, that would nope. be maybe too extreme. Exactly. So you were looking at a square plane there just to get a, a gradual transition of length. Exactly. Now as you came into the side, you didn't cut a baseline. I didn't. But you continued to over direct back. Exactly. So the internal shape that we created in the back, we're using that guide and we're just pulling everything back. So we're keeping a lot of length towards the front. And the fact that we didn't cut a line in the sides is gonna mean that the outlines will be really nice and not only longer, but softer, as you can see. And that gives you more freedom to play in what exactly. we perhaps call refine. Exactly. Yeah, and maybe do some of that work dry and kind of Absolutely. push the hair around. Yeah. All right, so again, we've got tons of people saying hello from Greece, from Russia, people complimenting Jan, how clean his sections are. Oh, Steve thank had a you. Question. Steve had a question. Steve Kim, our buddy Steve. What's up, Steve? I've noticed, Jay, that you're pushing your sections into the previous mm -hmm. as opposed to standing behind the section and pulling. Any benefits to that? I think um, in this way, um, the reason I'm standing in the front is just helping me to pull it to the correct place. But you could, you could stand in the back. But I just think it's much easier um, for my hand position to be standing here because the back of my cutting line is created on the outside of my fingers. So as I work towards the front, it's the same hand position. So it's kind of consistent. It's you know, easy. I think interestingly enough, over the years, the one thing that I've learned, and I wonder what you think, Jay, is that if you really understand your shape, yeah. you know, and understand what you're going for three-dimensionally, yeah. There are a few different ways to hold it. Exactly. You know, and I think that sometimes what happens is people get so dogmatic about like the right body position. Exactly. But I almost always find there's more than one body position. Can you take a look at this real quick? I'm sorry. There's lots of different body types too, aren't there? I As do. a hair cutter, you know, my height, the size of my arms, my hands yeah. may be quite different from yours. I think the most important thing, you're right, we get so technical, but the most important thing is comfort. You have to be comfortable when you're cutting hair because the more comfortable you are, you have more control. So just bear that in mind. And as long as it doesn't impact on your shape that you're trying to create, then there's no real problem. Yeah. And again, back to that point, I've always found that once I believe something to be true in haircutting, yeah. then I saw someone do it differently and something still come out amazing. Yeah. It like broke that rule. Exactly. You know? But you have to start somewhere. So if you do have a teacher that you respect and they say, hold it this way, do it this way, try your best to do it that way. Yeah. So that helps you get discipline and control. I think so. And then once you have that discipline and control, you can start to kind of make it your own. It's like learning a dance and then adding your Absolutely. own moves. I heard you're quite a dancer. I heard you're quite a dancer. I heard, I heard <laughs> that at Goldwell. He's just being nice. I heard that at Goldwell Color Zoom in Stockholm at uh -oh. the after party. Uh -oh. You had some great moves on the dance floor. <laughs> I can't remember who was telling me that. But we were talking about what a great guy you are, how cool you. you are. And he can dance too. And he can dance. It's good to know. He Thank can you. shake a leg. <laughs> okay, so please keep the questions coming. All I'm doing here on the second side is continuing to over direct into the back. So we build lots of length and weight towards the front so she has some disconnected length to drop away. I'm just for myself. Our buddy our Anthony section. Kohler just joined. Hello, Anthony, yeah. how are you? He's a great guy, fantastic yeah. guy. All right, so let's get back to the technique. Uh huh. So again, I'm coming towards my last section. Just remember to remain consistent in your angle and in following your guide. Um, and as soon as we've done this, actually, the last section, I'm going to blow dry the underneath. We're going to point the shape out, refine it all, and then we'll do the top, which is probably different to what we're used to doing in the salon. We tend to blow dry at the end of the haircut. But the reason we would do this in this connection is that way um, it's much easier. We don't have to go through and find the zone again. We can kind of 
finish and keep moving forward. So we did have a question ab about the top. Um, you know, obviously you've pre-sectioned out the top. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the section and perhaps why you sectioned it the way that you did? Absolutely. So the that was a question that came in from Gina Mansafi. That's a very good question. Thank you, Gina. Um, and the reason we're doing that is if you come and have a look at the section, it's a rectangle, which means it has two corners. And the easiest way to think about it is everywhere you have a corner, you're going to keep more weight in your section. So had my section been a triangle, which is quite common, we would have kept most weight through the center. But we've got a little bit of a jump in the crown. So by coming um, down and keeping it more rectangular, we're going to have two bits of weight. So we'll basically have more length that drops out in the back to cover the underneath shape. Okay, so I'm going to get some product in. I'm going to start to dry off. And while I'm drying the underneath, please keep the questions coming and I'm going to try to answer them and blow dry at the same yeah, time. Yeah, because, you know, blow drying is a really big part, especially with precision haircutting. Exactly. Right? If you do, you know, tell, uh, what's your theory here? So you've done a very precise haircut yeah. and your goal, you've done some cross checking yeah. and then you're going to do some blow drying. And I would imagine you're going to do some what we maybe call refining or Absolutely. personalizing. Yeah. So how important is the blow dry and, and the product that you choose sure. and the process, the brush, yeah. all that stuff? I think it's essential really because right now I'm using Hot Form by Style Sign, which is one of my favorite products. Honestly, it's amazing. And this is going to help me to get a good finish on the hair, to control the hair, to get it into a good shape. And then I'm going to use a little bit of um, Glamour Whip, which is like a very light mousse, and that will help me get it into shape. So you, you use product. You're not afraid to use product. I think this is where people go wrong. Yeah. They don't use enough product on the hair. Yeah. And um, really, what this will do is help me get a good finish, which is essential to me refining the shape well. Because if I don't get a good finish, I won't be able to check my hair cut properly. And um, what type of brush, I had a question come in here about, you know, when you're thinking about what type of brush you're going to use. Can you tell us a little bit about your philosophy and brushes? Yeah, to be honest, considering my background and where I did There's my There's a lot training, of uh, variety in them here. <laughs> Should we have a look at my Yeah, let's have a brush. quick look at, at the brush kit as you comb in some of that, um, the, the Goldwell style sign. What product did you say that was? It's Glamour Whip. Yeah. You can see he's got a very wide variety of brushes. <laughs> Seven row, nine row, vest, Denman, and a paddle brush. All my favorites. All your favorites. All so, you know, I, I think a lot of people maybe aren't that familiar with the concept of these type of brushes. Yeah. Obviously, most people tend to use round brushes. Mm -hmm. um, and you gravitate towards what we call either a flat brush or a Denman brush or a nine row. You got any other names for these kind of brushes? Um, let's have a quick look. So we've got some Denman brushes, classic Denman brushes, which are these ones yeah. here, these three. Um, so we've got a larger one, which will give you more tension. Yeah. The more teeth a brush has, the more tension it more will have. Grip. So this is great. You know, you've got hair with a bit of a kink to it, and you want to get it very smooth. And these are all nylon, so very easy to keep clean. Exactly. Yeah. And it's yeah. really important, actually. Good point. You have to keep your tools very clean. Yeah. And then we have a ceramic vest brush, which are seven and nine row. Um, these just help you get a little bit more of a bevel. On the hair because yeah, they're these are the curved. vest brushes they have more curvature exactly and they yeah. just help you those are my the favorites yeah and you know what Good they've choice. become so popular in the past year uh -huh. um you know as at hair brain pro where we sell brushes yeah all of a sudden in the past year they've become so popular yeah. all right so you're going with a classic denman and you're starting now with the blow dry uh -huh. so we're going to start off i would assume maybe doing some wrap drying we are exactly now wrap drying is it's designed to create fluidity in the hair um, so it's really you're focusing on the roots and uh, just brushing them in different directions. So this really is an art form. I think people think it's just to take out the moisture yeah. or to push the hair around. Yeah. But you're really preparing your blow dry, yeah? Absolutely. And you're getting those roots to kind of have a natural, neutral movement really? so the hair can swing. Exactly. What I want is I don't want to create a blow dry where if our lady's head moves, the kind of hair moves with her head. Yeah. Like a helmet. You want the hair to be free and, and swing it around. You know, that can easily happen and perhaps that's why you're not using a round brush. Correct. Even though that can give a beautiful set finish, exactly. you want a little more swing and movement here. Mm -hmm. So uh, our good friend John Maroney has joined in. He Hello, says hey. He says how we're doing. So John, John, uh, did he kind of bring you into Goldwell? Did he, he bring you into this position? Exactly. John's our global vice president um, and he's a fantastic guy. And really, it's, a lot of it is thanks to his vision for what he wanted for the company. You know, 
Gold Rod traditionally we've been seen as a colour company, but we prefer to see ourselves as a full service brand. And not only do we do great colour but, and, and great products, but now we offer cutting as well. So I think John's really helping to bring that vision of Goldwell being a full service brand to life. It's been really incredible what's happened with the brand in the, in the last seven, eight years. You know, I have someone that's kind of on the periphery watching it. I think it's been great for our industry. These phenomenal education facilities, like the one that we're in, this didn't exist a few years ago. It's right here in New York City in the Meatpacking District, where you can take classes with artists like Jay, um, Simon Miller, different artists from all over the world come here to do classes on a regular basis. And you know what? It's not just for people that use Goldwell. If you're interested in taking a class, you can head over to the website, you can check out the Facebook page. It's a great introduction to the product, but it's a great introduction to education in general. And they host all kinds of phenomenal events here. So um, come check it out, Goldwell KMS. Academy in New York City. So back to Jay, he's continuing with that rap drawing, and you're very focused on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So again, give us an overview of how and why. So really, you just want to brush the hair around the head. You'll notice that I'm not just brushing the hair in one way, I'm brushing it in opposite ways, just so that we don't get too much of a bend and direct the hair too much in one way. So as I blow dry forward, I'm swapping hands and going the other way also just so we get an even kind of bend on the hair. And now, are you pressing a lot on her head or are you just kind of very lightly? Yeah. I think you have to be careful with the Denman because the teeth can be quite strong, but you have to be quite firm in, in directing the roots and take long strokes, don't just do small movements, just really stretch the hair around the head. So thanks Candace. Candace shared the link for Goldwell KMS registration. If you guys want to get up close with people like Jay and the rest of the Goldwell International Educators, you can head over there to goldwellkmsregistration.com and check it out. Did I notice that you didn't add any product to the roots? That was intentional? Um, I added a little bit, but I, I didn't want to weigh the roots down too much with product. Um, it's more the kind of mid-length to end. I mean, that's kind of a general good concept, unless you're going for lots of volume and kind of big hair, which you're not. You're going for natural movement and swing, yeah? Where if you were going for something a lot larger, perhaps you would apply something to the root. Exactly. Have a little trouble with your nozzle there? I am, uh, yeah. <laughs> this okay, so Just now, as we start to use tension dry, I'm going to come through with a nozzle. And this blow dry technique is going to help you to create a smoother finish and control the direction of the ends. So literally just going through section by section and applying heat and directing the ends to sit out. So Jay, we had a question a little bit about your background. How did you become a hairdresser? Yeah. You know, how did you how did you end up in this position that you're in today? Yeah. In five words or less. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah, I am um, it's funny, I, I always wanted to be an actor. I didn't think I'd be a hairdresser. You were the new James in Bond. Except, yeah, I that's see what on I your Instagram when you always have the tuxedo <laughs> and the buttons open. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still trying as a failed actor. Bond, um, James Bond. But the thing is, the thing about acting is obviously you're out of work a lot, so it's good to learn a trade if you like. So, so that was did, the did you do some acting? Did you literally pursue it? I did it at school actually. Um, and when I was at school, I got like 100% a hundred, a hundred A star for my exam. So I really thought I'm going to be an actor. Oh. Um, but a lot of my family are barbers, so I thought, well, if I want to do hair, I wanted to be the best I could possibly be. So I started at Vidal Sassoon as an apprentice when I left school. And if I'm honest, as soon as I walked in and I met the amazing people that I was working with, I just fell in love and I never looked back, to be honest. You know, we do the best job in the world. We really do. And there's still that performance aspect. That's okay, thank you. Um, you still get that kind of performance aspect for when you're teaching and when you're on stage. So yeah, it's great. Who were some of your early mentors? Thank you. um, oh, I've trained with so many people, honestly. I think there's always some people that kind of stand out to you as well. Um, I'd always look at somebody like Mark Hayes, who's um, a man who needs no introduction. I'd always watch him as a, as a youngster and think, I wish I could cut hair like him. He just made it look so effortless and yeah. very precise and, and everything he done was very beautiful and suitable. So yeah, I think that you was You know what's great. interesting, you know, I have a similar background. I did my apprenticeship at Sassoon and I, I learned watching all the Marques videos, yeah. uh, the yeah. contemporary classics. Yeah. 
And I always thought Mark was very, very tall. Yeah. Because he's got these long, long fingers. He's got like an extra digit, doesn't he? He's got, most of us have three, he has four. And when he cuts hair, his fingers look very long. And then when I actually first met him in the early 90s, I was surprised that he wasn't very tall. But that, that's my fault. But you know what, here's what I do have to say. I'm super honored this year. I'm going to be part of the Sassoon presentation at ISSA, uh, which is the Long Beach Chair Show. Um, I, it's my 20th year since and, um, they invited me to host one of the segments of the Sassoon presentation. Amazing. Yeah, so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and of course, we also have our teaching this year at ISSA, uh, where we're getting a whole bunch of great artists together. All right, so let's get back to this blow dry. So you've changed from wrapping. Yeah. What are you up to now? So now I'm using, I'm continuing to use tension dry, but a combination of both at times, you know, just to keep the roots really free and also to speed up the drying process. And also don't be afraid to move the head around. I think that's really important too. Now, usually you wouldn't really wrap dry with a, a nozzle on. You take the nozzle off, but I think it's not practical to keep pulling off the nozzle. So get a lot of your wrap drying done without the nozzle. And yeah, that's so kind of the air can go in different directions. Exactly. But now you're doing some very focused drying, tension drying, as you called it. Exactly. We used to call it leafing. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I have actually. So it's like leafing time. through the pages of a book. Yeah. You're just exactly. turning your wrist as if you're leafing through a book. Exactly. So lots see, of people are so happy that you're teaching this type of blow drying. Oh, good. Because, uh, again, most people don't know how to do it or aren't comfortable with it. Um, just the key is keep the dryer pointing downwards and get the brush and the heat to work together. It will make it much easier. Okay, and of course, lots of people are interested in what's going to happen with that top area. Yep. So you've, you've left that uncut so far. Yep. And you've layered through the bottom and disconnected the sides. Exactly. So, so what's gonna, going through your head? I'm going to crack on with this. Um, I'm going to try to be as quick as I can with the blow dry. Um, and then through the top, I really want to keep a lot of length. So we still have that feeling of length. And also we can kind of exaggerate some more length and weight and, and versatility towards the front of the shape. I think that's the key. That's another thing this connection gives you. It gives you that versatility because I think when you cut hair, a client will always go home and wear it in their own way and they should have that freedom. And I think that when you start to introduce disconnection to your work, it just makes your haircuts a lot more versatile as well for your client at home. Again, lots of love. People are really excited to see this type of blow dry and learn about it. Thank you. So any more questions about any, I mean, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? Because you, you guys have been in Barcelona, right? What have you been doing? up to, yeah. yeah. We've been doing tons of travel. We're having a little trouble with the connection at the moment. Now we're good. Yeah, we've been doing tons of traveling and trying to do these harebrained lives all over the world. Yeah. Um, we caught up with, with you in Stockholm earlier. Yeah. Um, it's hard to even know what time zone we're in, but you know we're on a mission to try to bring as much education as we can to our fellow hairdressers. What type of blow dryer are you using? This um, this is called High actually, and it's um, a really nice light blow dryer with a good power. I think we've um, we've got a fantastic range here as well, um, but we don't actually have them in the academy today. Um, the Gold World Pro Edition are the ones that I usually use. I think hair dryer is so important in tools generally, aren't they? I mean, not only your brushes and combs, but your signing equipment is really essential. Have well. you ever heard our, our motto, a craftsman is only as good as his tools? I like that, it's a true. A craftsperson is true, right? only as good as his tools. And I believe that. I, I don't think that a tool will make you better if you're, if you're not good or you haven't learned, yeah. but if you have some skill and technique, the right tool will take it to the next level. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But also, in contrast, they say that a bad workman will blame his tools, so I can't say anything bad about any hair dryers or the no. tools that I'm using. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, lots of love coming in. Candace says they love having you here this week doing your uh, academy so program. much fun, so, so those of that are just joining us, can you tell us a little bit about that program again that you put together? So basically, we have the Master Stylist program. Master Stylist. Master Stylist, yeah. And it's Basically, it's a journey, a journey of education, of cutting education. It's, um, it starts with the essential shapes, which is the foundation to cutting hair. 
and it goes on to contemporary shapes which I've been doing this week which is more haircuts like what I'm doing here today an introduction to this connection salon friendly this connection just so we've got something more exciting for our so clients someone if someone wanted to get into the, the master program yeah what would they do they basically go onto our website goldworld.com and um, yeah just go through the education links and, and get in touch I and then that's an ongoing program. They go through several different classes to, to each one. You know, how long is the whole program to become a master? Yeah. To become a Jedi? What exactly. do you have to do? So basically, the Essential Shapes is a three-day course, and it really focuses on the discipline of cutting hair. So after the three days, you'd go away and study, you'd learn the theory. And it's not just cutting. We, we see loads of demonstrations. You get to cut hair. You, you get a, a different learning subject every day. So the first day, it's like the lecture of, of the discipline and the rules behind cutting hair. And then as from day two, you learn sort of consultations in the morning. On day three, again, not only are we cutting hair, but we go through, um, we go through suitability. So it's very, very intense. Even though it's only three days, not only are the students exhausted, but I'm, I'm dead after them. Yeah. How long are the days? Um, they're, they're from 9 to 5 or 10 to 5, yeah, depending on, on the academy and the location itself. And you're doing it at different Gold Ball Academies around the world? Absolutely. So which, which different facilities do you do the class at? So in, in New York here, in this amazing space, also in London, um, I've travelled to Santa Monica and done it there also. But if I'm not teaching it myself, because it's impossible for me to teach all of them, but I've got a fantastic team, and honestly. I've, I've worked with them all myself, I've got them up to the training, and they're, they're amazing anyway, so we've got and an incredible global So there's team. a companion program for colorists as well? Exactly. So there's a Goldwell Master Colorist and Master Stylist. Exactly. Do some people do both? Because most people do both. To be honest, yes. Yeah. Yes, I think it's really important. Not only do we have great discipline with our color, but now our, um, our customers, and even new customers, they can come and learn the cutting aspect of it too. There's some questions coming in about um uh, yeah, so some people are still wondering about the top. Yep. So Jay's doing kind of uh, a combination where he's done, he's cut the bottom, he's put a baseline in, he's layered it, he's finishing it. Yep. Then are you going to dry the top before you cut the top? I'm actually going to cut it and then dry it. All right, so I'm you're drying the bottom so dry. you can see how this top is going to relate. Exactly. Yeah, but you will cut this technically wet. Absolutely. So it's a little different for some people to see that. You know, they, there's questions about, you know, why are you doing the bottom before the top? See, so this it's way, visual. As we, as we kind of finish this, this part of the haircut's done, and then we just have to do the top. So that's the you know, one of the things that I've learned that I recommend to people is, you know, sometimes it's nice to change your game. Yeah. If you've never done what Jay's doing here, which a lot of people I'm sure haven't, you know, cut something wet, dried it, then cut something else, yeah. try it. Because, you know, if you keep doing things the same way all the time, it's hard to get a different result. Exactly. Where if you change your game, change your approach a little bit, sometimes you find something new. And I think, I think that's, that's great. I think that's the biggest thing I, I hear when I travel and teach around the world is, our clients are boring, we keep doing the same thing, but really the clients only have what we give them. So if we keep doing the same thing on them, they're going to keep wearing the same haircuts and, and we're going to keep cutting it the same way. So I think just don't be afraid to try something different. There was a question earlier about um, getting back into the salon after you've left or... Yeah, there was a question that someone had about, basically about getting confident. Like yeah. someone who loved cutting hair, but um, left the industry because they felt a anxiety and perhaps weren't confident. What are some tips you would give to someone to get that confidence back? Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna be really, really honest with you here. Is that person tuned in still? Uh-huh. And what's the name of I'm person? looking, I'm sorry, there's so Heather. many. All good, okay, well this is for Heather or whoever asked that question. Um, Heather Malcolm. <clears throat> so Heather, this is for you and everybody else. It's not just, you know, people in the salons who feel that, believe me, there's, there's days I've had in, in my career where I was already considered to be successful where I doubt myself and I, I still ask myself, you know, can I really do this? Which might sound crazy because for a living I teach people. Yeah, but if you didn't have that feeling, you wouldn't be human. Yeah, but do you yeah. know what it is? I'm questioning myself because I care, right. because I want to be better. So that's very normal. And if you look in the art world, mm. some of the biggest artists whose work sells for millions today they die doubting themselves. And look, Absolutely. they go down as the biggest artists ever. So um, it's very normal to question yourself. 
But I'd say just, just kind of believe in yourself and, and try to enjoy it. Take that pressure off yourself. You know, and of course, education helps. You know, our friend yeah. DJ Muldoon has a, a, a motto that education destroys fear. Knowledge destroys fear. So if you're having a lot of anxiety because you perhaps aren't exactly sure what to do, yeah. you know, do your best to educate yourself. Try to get out there, you know, watch videos. If, if you can afford it, take hands-on classes, which are so important. That's what it and, is. It, it usually comes from a lack of... Um, confidence doesn't it and a lack yeah. of knowledge and I'll add one last thing about dealing with anxiety that, you know because everyone has it anxiety is a normal human emotion like yeah. love or happiness exactly. um, if you want to help control anxiety try meditation yeah, yeah. Um, we were talking about that last night yeah we? I meditate daily and it's been a huge huge part of my life um, and I think it will make a big difference for any anyone yeah. it's you know working out the brain and, and understanding yourself so, you know, dealing with anxiety, dealing with fear of being successful behind the chair, number one, get, get training yeah. any way that you can, uh -huh. and uh, perhaps think about how Thank to be more mindful. Good, so keep the questions coming. This is great. This is really, really good. You know, this is what we want. We want it to be very interactive. So just what's going through my mind now is I'm finishing up ironing. I'm just going to go through and just point the shape in, going through the same sections as I used for cutting before I move on to the top. Um, we're going to keep a lot more length on top um, just so that our lady can throw it around on different sides and get lots of versatility. I'm going to try to pull that picture up again now so that we can see you know, exactly where we're headed because Jay and Lindsay here consulted and this was the look for those of you that are just joining us. So you can see how it's progressing. He layered it through the back, kept the sides a bit disconnected and now he's going to work with the top. So you can see where we're at at this point. How's it feeling Lindsay? Yeah, look you gorgeous. Haven't seen, you haven't seen the back yet. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she never will though, because it's hard to see the back of your head. Exactly. So. I think this is great for people who want to keep a feeling of length. You know, you can see through the front; it's still nice and long. So I'm just going to go through really lightly and start to point into the shape. We're still keeping our clean structure in the shape, and literally just get the the blades coming completely parallel to the hair strand, so you can still keep. A strong, clean structure in your shape, okay? And what's Which very. Which seem to notch out quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. And, and that just depends on, on each person's hair. Our lady, she's, Lindsay's actually got lots of hair. Strand for strand, it's finer, but very high in density, which means she has lots and lots of hair. All right, so we have a question from uh, Jacqueline yeah. who said, You blow dried the hair extremely straight. Why did you use a flat iron also? Um, just really, that's a really good question because. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people refer to the irons as straightening irons, so they think, well, if the hair's straight, why do you need to use them? I don't, I don't actually call them the straightening irons, I refer to them as the finishing irons. So even though the hair was straight, I just wanted to add additional sort of shine and finish. It just makes the cuticle smoother, makes the hair swing more, and that's the kind of feeling I wanted. But so yeah. you used it more as a polishing tool, a finishing tool. Exactly. You just got your straightness from down. blow drying exactly. and then use the iron as a finishing iron. I just want to add one more thing very quickly. You'll notice how even though I'm going through the hair now that it's dry, it's not static, is it? And that's really dangerous. Once you iron the hair and you start to touch it, it can get very static, especially when the hair is very clean. So that's why I use so much product. You can see the hair just sits so much better. So make sure that you prep the hair well with the correct product when you're, when you're considering cutting dry. So what are some things to think about here when you're doing this, uh, would you call this point cutting? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper point cutting. You're not just breaking up the very ends. Exactly, I just want all the hair to sort of intermix and all these different lengths. Because we have to look at hair as not just a solid material, it's made up of thousands and thousands of strands that make this material. And, and it should sort of work together. You know, and by coming through and pointing the shape, we're just sort of diffusing these lengths in so we get lots of freedom and movement in the shape. So building a really strong kind of square layered shape through the back with over direction, yeah. blow drying it, and now coming through and using very vertical point cutting. You're yeah. not trying to change. You know, can you explain a little bit? Because I think sometimes people go in to texturize the haircut yeah. and, and they perhaps they changing. change it. Yeah. So how are you avoiding changing that haircut? Very good question. The first thing is I'm using the same sections that I did when I was cutting it. Therefore, there's less chance of me changing the shape because I'm picking up the same cutting line, okay? I'm keeping the cutting line, but the angle of the blade is completely parallel. 
if I come through at an angle, I'll create more of a jagged edge, which isn't bad because you might want that. But in this case, I want to keep as much of the structure as possible. So we've had lots of questions about scissors. Yep. Um, what are some of your favorites? And do you use different scissors for dry cutting and wet cutting? Oh, Can you tell us a little so bit about cool. scissors? I, I use a pair called Wings, actually. An amazing pair of scissors called Wings. They offset 5.5, um, but I've just received an amazing new pair from you guys. Um, the new Hairbrain Scissors um, by BMAC. I'm really, really excited to try them out. So from now on, the, the next few looks you're gonna see, I'm gonna be using them. And yeah, I've heard great stuff about them. Now, in, in general, do you, you don't necessarily use, a, a lot of people would wanna know, do you use a dry cutting scissor? Do you ever use a texturizing scissor? What's your philosophy there? To be honest, it's what your, your hand, scissors are very personal, it's what your hand gets used to, you know, and what you're comfortable with, what you trust, um, and what you feel confident with. And, and this blade, I, I do everything with this pair of scissors, to be honest. You know, I cut wet, dry, barbering, everything with these. And that is the wing. Exactly. Yeah, those are wings. And wings are a Japanese scissor, you know, the, one, the only thing I'll add here is, you know, um, in, in the scissor world, Scissors that come from Japan are, are really, really the, the, the premier type of scissors. So just be sure that you're, whatever you're paying a lot of money for was manufactured in Japan using Japanese steel. Um, and it's, you know, again, it should say made in Japan on the scissor to be legally something from Japan, which just is important. One last thing I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna come through horizontally and I'm gonna pick this hair up. And this way we're making sure that we keep the outline, okay? And, and I know you are looking in the shape. mirror at this point. I am, I'm using the mirror. And I'm gonna over direct this hair back. Okay. Um, so now I know the outline is safe. I'm really gonna point into this top here just to loosen it up. And you can see what that does. It just sits a lot lighter, okay? I'm gonna do the same on this side. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the top. So lots of love coming in for you, Jay, but everyone's really anxious about that top. Yeah, right, you know, so let's move on to the what's top. What's happening there? So, you know, again, explain that you, you, the, the way that you've worked here. You've put the shape in through the bottom, you've blow dried it, you're refining it, and you're keeping the top separate. Why? I think what's really important in preparing the underneath properly, because this is most of the shape. This is the foundation that the top's going to sit on. So you need to just make sure that it's really, really clean. So we're just gonna, last thing, we're gonna check our line. You can see if you kept your line in nice and clean, you shouldn't really have too much work to do. And that's like I was saying before, if you spend time on your technique, at the end, you won't have to do too much to it. The shape should kind of come together really well. Again, so much love for you, Jay. And I think it's, it's a great example in our industry how someone can be humble and nice and talented. <laughs> Um, you, you know, it, too kind. Thank yeah, you. I, you know, I think sometimes we think, you know, I have to be the, the abstract artist or I have to really show uh, or be somewhat egotistical to be successful. And I think that's one of the reasons why, why I personally love you and I know you. why the audience loves love, you. Love is a so, strong word, Gerard. Well, it is. Hey, hey, I love you, buddy. I love you, man. I love you. No, you're a great example of being a, a nice, good person Thank you. who shares. I think, do you know what, if I'm honest, that's the... It's the thing I hate most about our industry is some of these people who are, are given um, a platform and they use it in the wrong way. They use it in a very egotistical way to satisfy themselves yeah. and their insecurities. Whereas, and that's the key word though, it comes yeah. from insecurity. Yeah. You know? And I think if we're lucky enough to have this kind of um, platform, we should use it in a very positive way yeah. and inspire younger people. You know, they're the future. Yeah, and that's that's the whole you know the whole purpose behind wow. Hairbrain. Yeah. All right, so guys, the top. everyone's been very anxious. Been We're getting patient. into the top. Are you excited for the top, Lindsay? Yeah, yeah. yeah you've been waiting. Are you anxious too? Yes, we all are. No, I, I trust him. Oh, okay. I trust him. Okay, so the most important word you'll ever hear is a hairdresser. We're gonna go through in vertical sections here. One second here. Yep, completely disconnected from the underneath. So here's the underneath length. Yep. We're gonna let that drop away. And we're going to cut a new guide. This time it's going to be more rounded, okay? And completely new length. And just before I move on, I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with this length. I'm going to cut it and then drop it and have a little look. This is really important to assess the shape. I could actually go a bit shorter. 
Okay, so of course, you know, how are you determining this length and angle are definitely the questions that come up. I think you have to think about proportion, you know, not only visually, but also the weight within the haircut. And I think that length should work. It should work quite well. All right, lots of questions coming in again. Yes, um, Jay used to work at Sassoon in London, and yeah. now he's, he's heading up the Goldwell Master Stylist program around the world. Uh -huh. um, that was one of the questions there. And um, yes, he's starting to work on the top, separated from the bottom, creating a new guideline. Yeah. So it, it seems like now you're working a little bit rounder or more kind exactly. of con convex with the yeah, head? So this is a bit of a rounder cutting line. You can see I've subdivided this zone from the top because there's a lot of hair. And I think the reason I'm being so patient is because Lindsay's actually got lots of hair. She's got lots and lots of hair. And I think that <clears throat> even though I'm taking my time, again, like I was saying before, I won't need to come back and rework anything because you'll see we're hopefully just moving forward in the haircut. So you have someone here, Darcy Arnold, who said you cut her hair in 2006 for a class. Oh good. Yeah. Did she like it? <laughs> Did you like it, Darcy? Let us know. Darcy, be nice. Yeah. Your sections are so clean and precise Thank and we you. talked about that earlier. Jay likes to work really, really clean so he can control the hair and, and have that sense of confidence in the outcome. He's now working into the top after completing the bottom, using some, uh, putting in first a perimeter in the back, then using some square layering and over direction through the sides. Yeah. He dried and refined the underneath using point cutting. Um, and now he's working into the top, kind of uh, convex layering off the head and completely disconnected from the underneath shape. So you visually are just choosing the length of those layers? Exactly, just coming through and like I said, just thinking about not only visual proportion, but also technically you wanna pick the right length for the hair. Don't worry at this stage if some of the underneath hair is picked up as well. You can see it just won't reach, so that's no problem. So I've cut the back, it was a rounded cutting line with square over direction, so horizontally our shape will be square. Um, and I'm also gonna bring, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on the second part of the zone in a moment. So cut it first vertical, check it horizontal. Exactly. Okay, again, lots of questions about this master stylist program. If someone's interested in learning more or signing up, they should go to goldwell.com. Goldwell.com, yeah, exactly. Check out Goldwell registration. Yeah. Well, yeah. do you know what? If you've got a Goldwell Academy um, nearby, take a walk, go and see go the right space, in. go That's and get to know the team. Yeah. If there's anything going on, see if you can hang about and watch. Because really, we're, we're, we're for the people. We just want to bring people together in our amazing venues around the world. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a vertical section, I'm combing the hair all back, and this cutting line that I've just created on the top, I'm gonna to use as a guide, and I'm gonna continue my cutting line. So you can see we're using that as the guide, and I'm gonna really over direct this hair back so we can work a more dramatic length towards the front. Now, this can be more or less dramatic depending on the angle that you choose. You know, I think that length should be quite nice. So again, I'm gonna carry on vertically, continue the cutting line, and again, just go back to the previous each time. And if, if people also follow you on social media, will they learn a lot about your classes? I know you're, you know, that's how we met, you know, yeah. through Instagram and Hairbrains and Facebook. Exactly. Um, and you're, you're always traveling and sharing what cities you're in and sharing photos of the models and the students, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think social media is amazing because when I travel, and, and thank you, I've met so many people through Hairbrain. This really helped sort of bring us together. And when I travel to different countries and I teach people, we feel like we already know each other because we met kind of through Hairbrain and, and online. So it's incredible. Thank you incredible. for doing a great job. That's, that's what we're all about, you know? And I think now, more than ever, it's becoming a global hair community, you know? Christina yeah. had a great question. Um, did you factor in where her part is? To be honest, um, you have to be mindful of the, the parting, and I, I was mindful of that when I um, placed the zone. It's just off center onto this side, but because it's just slightly off center, I'm gonna cut it without a real parting, um, and that way my lady can kind of throw her hair around from side to side. But if there's a strong parting, my advice is go with the parting, definitely. Now at this stage, I would say that if you want to start to exaggerate the length towards the front and start to work quite loose, you can do, you know, you can work, you can start to slide your scissors if you want a more dramatic length in the front. Can you give us a look at what that would, might look like? Yeah, so if you wanted to, you could just do this, literally slide your fingers and work from short to long. Um, and it will just give you more length towards the front. 
I'm keeping it just a little bit more connected, just a bit looser towards the ends. So I'm on my last section now before I blow dry. Um, <clears throat> again, just using this cutting line that I created by the crown and just working from shorter to longer and just building that length towards the front. So we had a question from Casey. Uh, she, she says she can see that you're cutting longer towards the front, but you're, are you also over-directing into the middle? Absolutely. I'm yep. using the same older direction, so we're going back to the previous. And, and again, the, the whole point here is to work from a, a more layered, leaner back into a longer angled front. And again, um, I will, because again, we have so many people joining and they're trying to kind of get an idea. I'm going to find the picture of what Jay's working on here, one of his um, haircuts from earlier in the year that he showed Lindsay that she loved. And this is kind of what he's working on. So if you're unsure, this is the goal of the end result. Um, she loves the color too, so we'll have to bring her back for the for the Master Colorist program. Yeah, we'll have to hook you up, and we'll we'll do another lot of hair brain live. Who are some of the people that teach the Master Colorist program? Some of your uh... We've got an amazing team around the world. They, you know, we, we're lucky because our team um, not only can they cut hair amazingly well, uh, sorry, color, they can also cut. So some of the guys who'll be teaching um, the cutting stuff also do some of the color. So for example, the other night I uploaded an image on Instagram and that was coloured by one of our fantastic uh, members of the team, Anthony Kohler, who does the cutting courses as well. And it just goes to show how versatile the team is and he done the colour for my lady also. So Frank Mussolino is dogging on my phone. Frank, this is a, uh, an iPhone 7, it's a week old and it's already broken. So, yeah. I, I think that the new iPhones break kind of easily. So Simon Miller also broke his the first week that he got it. So, but I'm gonna head over and get a new screen very quickly. Sorry about that, Frank. <laughs> Frank's Let's recap on the products. Yeah, so I use a little bit of pot form to start off with, which is part of the style sign range. Um, and this is just really good sort of blow dry protector spray. Helps get the hair into good shape. And also Glamour Whip, which is a very light mousse, not too strong. I think, like I was saying before, it's very important to prep the hair really well before drying. Yeah, there was a question earlier about um, who were your inspirations and who do you look up to and, yeah. and why and all that good stuff. I Sorry, think, um, no, no, no problem. Um, like I was saying before, there were two mentors when I was growing up who were leading the company that I was working for and um, they really inspired me a lot for different ways. I mentioned earlier on Mark Hayes was one of them and what I loved about him is how technical and precise he was but also um, another man who inspired me greatly, a man who needs no introduction is somebody called Tim Hartley who we all know and I think Tim had this amazing and still has this amazing touch on hair and he's like a visionary, he's, he's not afraid to really challenge the way people think and see hair and he's got such a a good understanding of the material. So at a young age, they were my biggest kind of influences, I guess. And then throughout my career, I continued to work with amazingly talented people. Um, we, we saw Alilon, who the company I used to work with. I was the principal of the Academy at Alilon Education. They're an amazing team. Uh, my mentors there were Johnny Othona, Pedro Inchenko, both very different haircutters, but very, very talented in their own respective ways. And I think everyone can inspire you. I'm constantly inspired because I'm, I teach hairdressers, so I'm always picking up tips and tricks. And I think that not only can you be inspired by things that you do like, but sometimes you might see something that you don't quite like, and it just reconfirms what you do like. So Johnny it, just joined in. Oh, wow. Hey, Johnny. What's hey, up? Johnny. So people have noticed that you're not using a nozzle at this time? Yeah. Um, I'm just working with an open airflow. Um, I'm wrap drying. I've also changed the brush that I'm working with. I'm not working with a Denman brush anymore, I'm working with a paddle brush. Why is it? I think because the length is a lot longer on the top, and this is just helping me to, to work with this length. You can see I'm blow drying it without a party, yeah, just from side to side, keeping the dryer moving. And then I'm going to go through do exactly the same thing. I'm going to run the irons over the shape and just point it out. So we're probably about 20 minutes away now from the end. If we can do it quicker, I will, I promise. 
Yeah, so wrap frying. Now, again, this is uh, something that a lot of people are unfamiliar with. You know, they're used to always just grabbing a round brush and powering through. Can you again explain the benefits of this type of drying with precision sure. haircutting? So when I dry hair, there's two main techniques that I work with. One is wrap drying, which is, as the name suggests, you literally wrap the hair around the head. It's designed to create fluidity in the roots, to emphasize movement, and create a natural body in the hair. Um, it looks like you just brush the hair in any way, but you, you continuously brush it one way, then you swap hands and go the other way, just so you get a really natural kind of movement and freedom in the hair. Um, and then afterwards, once you've got, once you work to about 70-80% dry, you go into tension dry, which is more when you come through, some people call it leafing, and it's more to control the direction of the ends. And you're, you're also thinking about the next step in cutting. If you were to overly or elaborately style the hair, yeah. you wouldn't really be able to go in there and do your refining. Exactly. So it's a different philosophy of working with hair. Yeah. You don't just cut the hair cut and then style it and say goodbye. Yeah. You're going through all these different phases of a basic shape, a cross check, a blow dryer, refinement. Yeah. And Is so that... it's important how, how you dry the hair. Exactly. I've noticed that you guys use the word craft a lot, which I love. You guys call us craft hair festival. It's like anything that's crafted. There's a process, there's a method, it takes time. And you know, every stage is, is for a reason. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure that everything's working really well. Constantly assessing the shape as well. Yeah, thanks for that. You know, at, at a certain point, we had to de define the type of hairdressers that made up our community. So we really thought about, you know, who were the, the people that really, really were the, the hair nerds and focused on the craft. And it was a simple combination to just say craft hairdresser. Simple term, but it's had a powerful effect. In less than three or four months, it's been hashtagged 15,000 times. Wow. You know, and you can't make that happen. It resonated with people. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was the same with the term hair brains, which has been tagged over a million times. Yeah, yeah which is kind of wild. Okay, so we've got a question here. Um, do you ever use clients' body parts for referencing when elevating or over-directing? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. That's a really good question. And I think that you should try to use as many things around the room as you can. So not only, for example, you could use the client's shoulder um, to help you maintain balance. So if you're working on one side to the other, but also things around the room, you know, the chair, um, the walls, you know, all these things that will help you around the room to build your shape. Absolutely, take the bite of it. So again, now you're just thinking about getting this final kind of, will you run the irons over this too? Yeah, kind of polish exactly. it? Just run the irons over it and then just go through and point into the sections. So, so you can see the hairs, the hairs pretty much dry anyway, but we're just trying to keep it as smooth as we can before we iron it. Do we have any more questions from the viewers? Um, I'm, I'm, let me look on the computer. There was a question about curly techniques, and we encourage you to stay tuned for next week. We will be addressing uh, men's barbering and curly hair with Hair Lab Detroit uh, happening tomorrow, actually. So, do you blow dry curly hair straight? That's the question that came in. Well, okay. Um, my answer is no. The reason my answer is no is because I love curly hair. Um, I believe in the way I was taught and the way I see hair is that you should always work with, with the hair in its natural state. Cut it well and let the hair do what it wants to do because ideally that will be easiest for the client. You know? Don't fight the texture, embrace it, and, and it will... Because really, we, we don't want to cut hair and encourage a client to spend lots of time on their hair. We should be liberating people from styling their hair too much. Absolutely. So yeah, I don't blow dry hair yet. So again, you know, for those out there that maybe have never heard of that, there, there's a certain philosophy in hairdressing and hair cutting where uh, people focus on putting in a strong shape into the hair and working with the fabric of hair as it is. And essentially, if it's straight, 
working with it straight, if it's curly, working with it curly, and that's kind of what you follow and that's what you, so do, do you still do some clients? I do actually, yeah. yeah actually. The good thing is I, I don't work in a salon and have loads of clients, but I have um, probably about 10, 15 people whose hair I cut, and they're like my friends. Um, over the years I've just kind of continued to cut their hair, and yeah. That way you can you cut people whose hair you want to cut. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I, uh, I I still work in the salon every week. In fact, I did some clients last night before meeting Jay yeah. to have a little post meeting, and uh, I I love it actually. I almost kind of enjoy it more than anything else at this point, you know, because I've built so many relationships. Most of these people have been cutting their hair for 10, 15, 20 nice. years. Sometimes they watch Hair Brain Live just oh, to see amazing. what's going on. Yeah, that's good. So they've become you know part of my family. Because you, they build a trust in you, don't yep. they? And, and you so powerful. Like a friendship, yeah, definitely. So what, uh, what's your Instagram and Facebook account? There's lots of people that want to follow you. Where would they find your work? Thank you. So I post a lot of my haircuts, a lot of my demonstration images on Instagram. Um, it's at J Mahmood, so just my name, at J Mahmood on Instagram. Um, and also on Facebook, I have my... I've, I've, I've got to my limit on Facebook as friends, but you can join my... Um, education page, J Mahmood Education, if you look me up. And yeah, please follow my journey, I really appreciate it. And keep in touch, if you have any questions, just send them over to me. You know, the, yeah, so friend. the majority of your time you're, you're out educating with Goldwell, yeah. um, and you've got the, your 10 or 15 clients to take exactly. up the rest of your time. What other things are you doing out in the, in the hair world? <clears throat> um, I think mainly my job is, to be honest, I, I've got, I'm very fortunate to be in the position I'm in. And I, I teach hairdressers around the world, so not only Goldwell staff, but also other hairdressers. I've got my own company as well, and I create bespoke um, hair cutting courses for, for salons and teams around the world. So I'm constantly traveling and teaching. Yeah, I saw on Facebook that you did the tribute show in Paris. Oh, that was amazing. That's a, a beautiful event. Well, I wanted yeah. to do. I mean, I was with some of my own hair, um, hair heroes on stage, and. It's an amazing magazine and event, so it was very exciting to do that. Actually. Yeah, it's great when you get to look around and realize, wow, these are some people that I've always, because I know Tim was part of that show. Tim, Angela, Angela Sanara, Sassoon, yeah. you know. Sylvia from Sassoon, and you get to look around and go, wow, I'm up here too. Yeah, right. so that's incredible. <laughs> So you're out there, you're doing hair shows, you're doing all these classes for Goldwell, you're visiting salons and helping people design exactly. training programs, things like that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Exactly. And uh, what do you do in your free time? I don't On have, airplanes. To be honest, I don't oh, have any free time. We were talking about it yesterday, weren't we? But you don't really... When I have free time, I just like being at home. I know that sounds boring, but I just want to spend time at home. Catch up with friends, family. You and know, watch Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Jay was telling us that that was his favorite show. Yeah, I've not got. So if you've got any recommendations of what I need to get into, yeah. I was saying the only one I got into was Breaking Bad. So Peaky Blinders. You need to get into Peaky Blinders. Okay. I'll yeah, look up you that. definitely have to. Uh -huh. How about you? What's your favorite show, Lindsay? Favorite show? Yeah. Um, I just finished Transparent not too long ago. I haven't even heard it's of amazing. that one. Is that good? Yeah. It's what's really that? Good. What's that about? Um, it's about people living with different sexual preferences and a dad. Oh, right, right. He's, uh, that's, yeah. uh, what's his name, right? He won um, yeah. Emmys for, for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm thinking his name. He's yeah, yeah. Is, is it a Netflix Question or an Amazon about, show? Um, if you use a round brush. <laughs> yeah. Do you use a round brush often? I don't, I don't know. I'm, um, I love the effect the round brush gives you, but the way that I approach hair is I, um, I cut shape into hair as opposed to blow drying shape into hair. Um, and I mean that with the greatest respect. I think a round brush is a tool that gives an amazing finish, especially on the longer layered looks. Mm -hmm. But for the way that I cut hair, I think um, I kind of want to see the shape of the haircut, like you were saying before, to be able to refine it and, and make it work for the wearer. It's well, just a different approach. Th there's lots of TV show recommendations coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay. you have to, yeah, you know, I know what people are into. So what's, <laughs> the, what's the top one coming uh, Game of Thrones, I Walking Dead, this, Banshee. Yeah. What about House of Cards? I keep hearing House of that Cards one. is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone went to the tribute show and they thought it was fantastic. Oh, what about the flat iron that you're using? These <laughs> so GHD, I'm yeah. Using, yeah, I'm using a pair of GHDs. Um, to be honest, these are the older ones and I yeah. prefer them. I think um, the newer ones are quite chunky, I think you go with what's what's comfortable for you really, so yeah. So can you give us some, John, you would like you to give us some tips on flat ironing or 
finishing ironing, polishing ironing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, because Johnny needs them, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say work with nice, clean sections so you're always in control. You can see I'm being, even though I can see a finish line, I'm being very patient. I'm not ironing anywhere near the roots, you'll notice. Yeah, the shorts of disconnected lengths. I'm allowing them to drop away because they're already ironed. Um, and I would say that do more the mid lengths and ends because you still want the roots to be free. And that happened with the wrapping. Exactly. So the process was wrapping to get the roots moving naturally, exactly. then tension or leafing to get the middles, yeah. and then the iron to polish the middles in the ends. And just slow down yeah. towards the ends. And, and something I like doing actually is as I use a comb, always use a comb, but as you get towards the end, sometimes I like to. Yeah. Slow down and just place the hair in my hands. Let it cool. So that has a bit of a bend as it cools down. Yeah, you're letting it cool into position. And I, I think if you just pull through and let it go, that's when you get static. Exactly. Yeah. And you notice you're taking all your sections back? Yeah. That's deliberate. Exactly, yeah. I just want the hair off the face for now. I'm going to go through and point into it. <clears throat> it won't really affect the direction of the hair because um, the roots, as I said, are free anyway. It will just, if anything, it will accentuate the movement towards the front. When, um, when we comb the hair down. Yeah, so you're not tugging on the root to pull them back. Not, you're at, just, all. Yeah. not at all. Yeah, just leave the roots really free. And I think generally speaking, not only when um, I'm ironing, but even when I cut hair, I'm, I'm not a, I don't use lots of tension. I just think that if you pull the hair too much, you know, people have different views on it, but personally, I think that you shouldn't pull the skin and the scalp too much when you cut because you start to get finger marks. I think using a fine tooth comb when the hair is wet, that keeps it clean Consistent. and organized. Yeah, exactly. And then you just need to catch it in the right place and cut it. You just shouldn't relax be your pulling. Hand. Exactly. You shouldn't be tugging or pulling. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got <clears throat> we've got a finish on the hair now. Um, and I'm just gonna go through and start to point the shape. Okay. I didn't want to iron it to death and make it super flat. Um, super super important question from Keith Ross. Yeah. Will United win the league this year? Oh my god, is that, that's a United fan I'm hoping. Yeah, I would imagine. I love Manchester United and anyone that knows me will know, but I don't know, we've just not been the same without Alex Ferguson. No. I, it would be a Sir dream. Alex. So, yeah, Sir Alex, it'd be a dream to win the league, but I don't think we'll do it this season. Yeah. Alright, so you just sprayed some product into the hair? Yeah, some diamond gloss just to settle the hair for any static. Beautiful product. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not using too much, but I think it's very important every time you touch the hair to get a little bit of product in. So before you get into the point cutting, can, uh, John is asking if you can just see the separation, the yeah, disconnection. Of course. So that, you want to explain that one more time and yeah. then you can go into your so we've refiner? we've got a rectangular zone <clears throat> through here, um, which is a longer panel on top. You can see it should drop away. Just below the crown, you can see here. And then you layered that longer and disconnected it, and now you're going to refine using point cutting and exactly. uh, maybe exactly. have some other tricks up your sleeve. Exactly. Now here, if you wanted, because I know people use different tools as well. Personally, I just use the scissor and the comb. But for example, if you use thinning shears or, or things like that, this is a time where you may want to use them. It's not a problem. But personally, I like to use um, do everything manually come through and point into the shape, keep it as clean as possible, and that way you've got more control. Okay. So just try to be as patient as you can for the next few minutes as you're doing this, <clears throat> and it will really make the difference in the shape. That last 20% uh, is equal to 80% of the value Exactly. Like to say. Exactly. That finishing is, is such a key part, you know? And I think, uh, unfortunately, people put so much effort into the beginning and then at the end maybe lose focus. Yeah, exactly. So even though I can see a finish line now, I'm just trying to keep that sort of concentration, keep that effort applied. Do we have any more questions as we're coming towards the end? Yeah, there's a question about color, you know, yeah. so I know, Jay, you're not a colorist, yeah. but you obviously work with colorists all the time. Yeah. If you were talking with a colorist, um, D.D. Portillo would like to know, you know, what would you like to see with the color here? That's, 
I'd like honest. to open this up to the audience also. Yeah, what would We've you guys a like? Distinguished to see? audience here. So personally, I think that if a shape, if if a shape is very strong, just my personal taste, because I'm a minimalist at heart. I think if a shape is very, very strong, then the colour should be very simple. And if the, the shape is simple, then I think the colour can be a little bit stronger. So, you know, you don't want one to overpower the other, and you don't want a very strong haircut with a very strong colour. But I think in this case, because the haircut's quite versatile, you could get clever with the placement, you know, you can have something that kind of, if you change partings, you know, some cool colour could pop out. I think something like that. Uh, we'd like to know about Leila. Oh, are we talking about my cat? Maybe. <laughs> oh, my cat. Yeah, it looks Leila. like one of your friends. Oh, okay. Uh, Mushtaq? Mushtaq, yes, from South Africa. Amazing guy, very passionate. And my cat, I miss her. <laughs> She's at home, I've got such a beautiful cat. I can't and wait he to actually see. showed us a picture of his cat last night at dinner, so this is not... Uh, it's true love. It's true it love. It is, yeah, so I can't wait to see her. <laughs> Yeah, so somebody, uh, Heavenly Hair would like to see your hair purple or teal. How do you oh, feel about wow. that, Lindsay? Okay, well, oh, I thought they were yeah. talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. What kind of colors have you had before, Lindsay? In your hair? Um, I've had all different. I've had when the rose was really popular, I had like rose tips. Um, uh -huh. um, when I was young, like in my early 20s, I had like the black underneath and the really blonde on top and yeah. you know. So you, you've, yeah. you've been adventurous with I your hair. I was, That's great. had very dark hair for a long time. And... Hey Dion. That's great. Nice to see you here. Okay, so we did have a, a question that I think um, we, we'd love to talk a little bit about. So this type of cutting, precision cutting, um, I think it was Julie again. She said she loves it but she struggles with staying on time in the salon. Yeah. So, you know, if you were working in the salon, yeah. Um, how long would you allot for this type of a cut? Probably about an hour, yeah. to be honest. An hour is a good time, quite a comfortable time. Um, <clears throat> I know the video's probably gone over just an hour now. Oh but, yeah, we've been talking. But, yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. When you, when you teach and you demo, you're lucky you've got a little bit more time on your hands. But I think um, in the salon, about an hour. An hour should be good. Yeah. Interestingly enough, probably for about the past 20 years, I've worked on 45-minute appointments. Yeah. And this year I started to feel really like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And I moved, I moved back to an hour and I'm so much happier. Yeah. Uh, but the truth is, you know, unfortunately, most hairdressers aren't charging enough for their services. Yeah. So they, they have to work faster and fit more people in. Exactly. So I mean, it's a real challenge. I mean, you have to have the confidence, the experience, you have to have the trust from your clients and, you know, the support of your team and your salon to charge enough for what you're worth. Exactly. And, you know, a lot of that comes from education. I, I bet a lot of people that take your, like, your master styling class, they maybe rethink their career a little bit. We were talking about yeah. that, actually. They, they start to um, have more service time and also they put their prices up a touch because they value their skill set. And, and, and it's kind do. of something they can say and they can publicize. They can be like, I'm going to become a master stylist. I'm going to train through this program over the next year. Exactly. And, you know, they're preparing their clients, getting their clients excited. And then when they say, all right, I'm a master stylist and I'm now raising my prices 15, 20%, whatever yeah. seems appropriate. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great strategy as well. So what I'm doing now, I'm almost, imagine like when you're cutting, you cross check. I'm going through in the same way that I cross check, but I'm pointing, so I'm pointing through the hair twice. Because my lady's got, honestly, she's got so much hair, which is amazing, it's not a bad thing. But just so that the hair doesn't sit heavy with the two zones, we just want the hair to be able to really move quite freely. And also, because of the previous colour where she's got blonde on some of the ends, you just want to blend the colour a bit as well. So we're not far along now, we've, we're almost done, coming towards the end. Um, and it's probably a really good time to ask any final questions. So. Yeah, there's one here I'd love to address, you know, being very business minded as a hairdresser. Christina Luck is asking, how often should you raise your prices? Now, I have a, you know, a strong philosophy here that, you know, you should raise your prices every year, just like every other industry and every business in the world. You know, at the very least, a cost of living increase of 5% a year. Yeah. And then if you've done something, um, where you've invested, like gone to a master stylist or master colorist program, you might be able to raise your prices even 15 to 20 percent. You know, you will have some fall off in clients with that much of a raise, but if you do the math, 
you're allowing new clients to come in at a higher price and you're changing the business. The last thing I'll say about it is a great time to do it is in October. Um, it's the fall, everyone's busy, everyone's get, getting used to change, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get an extra rush through November and December, which literally, if you're adding $5 to every service you do in the two busiest months of the year, it can really, really add up. So that's my opinion. Again, if you wanna have more discussions like that, join us at hairbrain.me. We have discussions like that every single day with hairdressers all over the world. All right, let's get back to the finishing touches here on this Last couple of haircut. Minutes. What yeah. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm, now I'm thinking about the kind of product that I'm gonna use. And also, just these long bits, I'm gonna run the irons over them one more, la one more time, the last time, and then we'll present the look. So, um, yeah, tell, tell us your thoughts. Tell us if you, if you do this in the salon yourself, or if Johnny you do actually it. had a, um, wants to know, wants, would like you to tell us about Kokomo? Kokomo, Kokomo, <laughs> Johnny, I miss Johnny. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Okay, Kokomo is, uh, we used to have so much fun. I, I think what's really important is that you have to be silly as well. And uh, we used to always say, come once, cut once. And then I come up with Kokomo, which is come once, cut once, move on. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's, it might so be tell silly, us that but again, it sticks in. in uh, just a little bit slower. Yeah, Kokomo, as in C O C O M O, I think. <laughs> And it's come once, cut once, move on. And things like that, it kind of sticks in people's mind. Um, so yeah, it's just a silly joke, but yeah. I get it, Johnny. But using analogy in education <laughs> helps a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so. So finishing touches here with the ironing at the tips and then one Thank final you, evaluation on the cut. There was a question earlier about um, how she would finish this at home. Thank you. To be honest, I think the more work we do now, um, the less she has to do. And if I'm honest, I would love to see her hair just left to dry naturally, you know, with any kinks in it, and I think that would be really cool. I mean, in all, in all truth and fairness, her texture is really not that different from this. Exactly. Yeah. This is exactly yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. I mean, when she walked in, when Lindsay walked in this morning, and I've seen her hair before, it's pretty much like this. Yeah. And it's you sweet. probably could just flip upside. It's, you're not going to have the same smoothness on the cuticle, yeah. uh, but obviously using the right kind of products would help. Exactly. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the mirror. I'm quite happy with the profile of the shape. You can see we've got a lovely fitted shape with these beautiful disconnected lengths. This is something that's very salon friendly. It would work really well in the salon. And what I really like to do with the hair is <clears throat> I like to run my hands through it and then just lightly spray. So run your hands through and just really lightly spray. So is that a hairspray or a shine spray? What this, is, is uh, this is called Magic Finish. It's a very light hairspray. It's, you know, anyone who knows me, they know I use this a lot. It's one of my favorites because I really like hair to be free. I don't like to um, <clears throat> use products that are too strong. And you can see this should, this should work really well in the salon. How's what do you feel, guys Lindsay? think? Feels great. Yeah. Feels like a weight off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So literally, I think the kind of haircut I wanted to do here is during the day, if Lindsay runs her hands through her hair, it should kind of fall back into place really well. It should be very free. If she wanted to flip the parting over side to side with her hands, it should. So let's get rid of this gown. Let's clean her up. And um, you guys can have a little look. Fantastic. Give us Great some point. feedback from your, your thoughts. You know, is there anything you guys would do differently at home? Or Not too many people. No, no haters, Jay. Congratulations. Oh, good. Good, good. So let's I hate this guy. He's one of the best <laughs> in the industry. Humble, not, not too passionate. Much. Everyone likes it. Shares his education all over the world through the Goldwell uh, Master Stylist Program. And uh, we're honored and so proud to have him. And thank you, Lindsay. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you, Goldwell, for hosting us here in the Academy. And we'll leave the final words to Jay Mahmood. Thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for all the great questions. I want to say a massive thank you to Goldwell, to the Hairbrain family. I love what these guys are doing and bringing us together. Thank you and keep in touch. Jay Mahmood on Instagram and I'll put up some images of this haircut later on. So please tune in. And, and we've got two more Facebook Lives coming at you tomorrow. We'll be here in New York with It'll Warren Moza. It'll be with Moza texture and some curls. So. And Roderick Samuels. And then on Sunday, we'll be live from Sassoon in Santa Monica. So we've got a busy weekend and love, peace, and hair grease. Thank you.